So AI has been a pretty controversial topic for photographers the last couple years, and the skepticism I think is 100% warranted. A lot of these AI tools are marketed essentially as tools that take the human element of creativity away from creativity. And this goes for all artistic forms, not just photography. There are tools that can create songs that sound exactly like your favorite musician. There's tools that can create hyper-realistic images that can replace commercial photographers and be used in marketing campaigns. And I honestly wouldn't be shocked if some AI tool comes out that can create wedding photos for people so a photographer's not needed. And this human element of photography, this love of creativity, is the reason I got into this in the first place, and it's the reason why I I started my daily photo project this year at Evan Ram Photo on Instagram. If you don't know what that project is, essentially I'm trying to create a piece of art every single day this year, and this project has been creatively fulfilling for me. It is the exact thing that we're talking about today, that human element, that drive to create, and it's made me one, rethink how I do photography, it's re-inspired me, and it's also allowed me to dive into all of these old photos I have on hard drives. I have over 200,000 photos, and this project has allowed me to find some gems that I didn't know were there. But there is one big problem, and that is the constraint that all of us have, and that is time. I do not have enough time to be investing hours of my day into this photo project. I have maybe one, one and a half hours tops. I have this YouTube channel to work on, I have moderncreativemoney.com to work on, I have my own health, my family, my son, there are just too many things to juggle. And I found myself at this constraint point with this project because I was spending hours looking for photos in these old drives. Sometimes I would find the photo and it wasn't even as good as I thought it was. There was this one subway photo that I spent two hours looking for from like 2018 and I finally found it and it like looked terrible. My brain just played a trick on me, I guess. But that's the big problem. It's not the editing, it's the finding these old photos based on my memory. And going into April of this year, I really started to consider cutting this entire photo project short. You know, it just didn't make sense to invest all this time. I almost changed it to a 90 day or 100 day project, but I found a solution. And that solution is XR Photo 2024. So XR Photo 2024 essentially uses the same AI technology that is used in something like Mid Journey. You know, the thing that we're all worried about replacing us, where you can just type in a text prompt and receive an image that's created essentially out of thin air, even though we all know that the AI is pulling from different places and it's not actually original work, that's a whole other conversation, you know what I mean. XR Photo 2024 takes that same technology and applies it to your photo catalog. So you could import every single photo that you've ever made, and XR Photo will go through those images, it will process each one and analyze it, and it will apply tags and keywords to those photos, allowing you to search through your entire catalog the same way you would generate an image with Midjourney, just with a text prompt or a keyword, or you can use faces or GPS, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Essentially, it's all the things that we dislike about AI turned into something that actually benefits us as photographers. It's a tool that helps us and doesn't intend to replace us, and that is why I decided to work with them on this video. That's why they were nice enough to sponsor this video and hook all y'all up with a 14-day free trial. You can just go to the link in the description down below, try it completely risk-free, follow along with this video, see if it works for your productivity creatively or in your business. Now, it's important to note that there is a little bit of startup time involved with using Using an application like this, the AI does have to analyze all your photos. So in this demonstration, we're using 16,000 photos, and these 16,000 photos took 38 minutes to import and have the AI analyze them. So there is a little bit of startup time, a little bit of upfront time invested, so the AI can look through all these images, apply tags to them, and make them searchable. But in my opinion, 38 minutes for 16,000 photos really doesn't seem that bad for the amount of time it's saving me in the long run. So let me show you how I'm using it. Now, one thing you're going to notice on the right side of the screen is this XR keyword, I guess, module right here. Now, this module is the easiest way to get an idea of how this works. Now, you can jump down to something like vehicle, and as you can see, there are 1,400 vehicle photos that it has analyzed and identified. So, let's click on vehicle right here, and as you can see, all the photos containing vehicles 
are brought up. Now, look at how smart this AI is. It recognizes that this bike image is technically a vehicle. This image right here is technically a vehicle even though it's a person on a scooter. It even picked up this blurry airplane photo right here, which is pretty wild. Now that example of vehicles was a basic example of how the tags and keywords work in XR Photo 2024. XR Photo adds advanced keywords to your photos when it originally analyzes your images. So we could do a drop down from vehicles to something like cars or planes or trains. There are so many options that have automatically been applied so you don't have to do any work when you're searching for particular images. Let me just show you quickly how that works. We can go to vehicle once again and we we can do this drop down and we can select the type of vehicle we're looking for. So maybe we are looking for an old car photo or that's the inspiration on the day. We can click on car right here and we're only going to get photos of cars. Now for me, I have so many photos that I forget that I made certain things. When I was looking through these images earlier, I actually saw a photo that I had no idea that I even created one day when I was out with Alec. It was this image right here. I had completely forgot about this and I might go back to this and re-edit this photo later on in Lightroom to use it for my daily photo project or anything that I might wanna post in the future. So another really cool feature you can implement into social media is let's say you're looking for an absolute banger of a photo. Let's go to architecture as our main keyword and click on that. Now we can sort by our aesthetic rank that this AI application has given our photos, essentially when we imported our images based on what this AI associates with an aesthetically pleasing image, it will rank your photos and these are the high highest rank images and as you can see a lot of the edited TIFF files that I've already made have made their way into this. The best photo is what I consider to be one of my better photos. So if you're looking for that Instagram banger that's buried somewhere in all your files, this is a quick easy way to find it using this AI ranking tool. Now one more thing you can do is go up here and click on find duplicates and we can search from our current view and look for any photos that are duplicated. This is going to help you just identify identify those moments where maybe you've made a picture like five or six times. There are times where it does make sense to keep some of these duplicated photos in here. In this case, maybe you're looking for the perfect one of me walking up these stairs or walking up a bridge. But in other cases like this, I can go ahead and remove all of these from this XR photo catalog so I'm not sifting through all these duplicates. This is just a nice easy way to find those moments where you were getting a little trigger happy with your shutter. Now what's cool about XR Photo 2024 is it doesn't just work off these keywords that were applied to your image as tags when you imported the photos. That is just a way to help you out. It's done automatically. You can actually type in your own keyword prompt. Let's say Moody and XR Photo 2024 will find all the photos that it associates with being Moody. You can type in something like sunset and get all these sunset photos in your catalog. Or you could type in something like green leaves or green trees and get all the photos containing green leaves or green trees. This is a great way to just find every image that you have that fits a particular theme all based off of your head rather than you searching through all of these images. Now, another great thing that XR Photo allows you to do is searching for particular faces. Now, I have an application for this that I'll show you in a second, but here's a practical scenario. Let's say you are doing a wedding shoot and you have 10,000 photos of different wedding shoots you've done this year. If you're looking for a particular photo of someone's grandma, maybe a client reached out to you looking for something, you can just search based off of the face that you need in your photo. And you can filter it down by age, you can filter it down by gender, you can filter it by one face, two faces, portrait, multiple faces. There are so many different options. So real quick, let me show you how I'm using this tool for my own business. Now let's say I wanna find a photo of me to use as a YouTube thumbnail. What I can do is actually click on find faces right here and I can select one face, portrait, two faces, several faces, any faces. If I select any faces, I'm probably going to get photos of like me and my son and my family, which is not what I'm looking for in this particular moment. If you say we're doing wedding photography and you were trying to find a particular photo from a certain wedding, that could be an easy way to find it is by doing any, 
or if you're looking for a specific portrait, doing one face is a good way to do that. Now, we're gonna select male because I'm looking for a photo of me. We could also select smile or no smile. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that blank because I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking for. And we can select specific collections or folders if we want, but we'll go ahead and search through everything real quick. And as you can see, we have now come up with 1,722 photos. Now, another cool way that you can use this find face feature is let's say you have a particular folder from a shoot. This is an example of it, but this is obviously a pretty small folder. Just imagine that this was, I don't know, a thousand photos, like you were working on a wedding or something, or you did a really long day of photos and you know there were some portraits sprinkled throughout. What you could do is you could click on find faces once again and you could base it off the current view right here and then you can select adult one face again male you can select any face and you can start a search and now as you can see from that folder we now have eight photos of me that I made it during this oppo campaign now one more cool way to use find faces is let's say we take this photo of Frankie right here and we want to find him exactly we can go up to find people and we can search on find people and it will show the the face that it is going to find results for. So we can search from our whole database or our current view. We'll go ahead and search the entire database. We'll bring our maximum number up and let's go ahead and start this search. And as you can see, every photo that Frankie was in is now being shown to us from our entire database and catalog of photos. So if you're looking for that specific person from that specific wedding or event, this is a great way to find it as long as you have one image of them to base the search off of. Now this would not be an honest video if I didn't give some examples of the limitations to an application like this. The technology is great, but it's not always going to be perfect. So let me show you an example. Let's go to, I don't know, let's go to animals and let's see what comes up. We'll click on pets right here. Now, as you can see, when we click on pets, we get mostly pictures of Dax, which is pretty cool. Dax is living the, his best life with my parents, but we do get a photo like this, which is just of my office. I'm not sure why it thought there was a pet in here. Maybe it was this photo on the wall. And it's kind of interesting. This is technically not wrong, but the AI identified the word dog and associated that with pet. So it's obviously not perfect, but in my opinion, it does the job in finding everything that you need. It just may on occasion find something that you don't need, which as this technology continues to get better, I think we'll see improvements in that. Now, I wanna show you how powerful the keyword searching on this is. So let's say you have a particular image that you're trying to find. You know you made a photo of lightning at some point in the last couple years. Let's go ahead and search lightning in here. And there we go photos appear of lightning, which I had completely forgot that I made these photos when I was working with this program. I actually went into the nature keyword and this came up and I completely forgot that I made these in Florida last year. So I might go back and mess with these a little bit in Lightroom. Now, once again, this is not perfect. Right here, we have this photo that looks cool, but I'm assuming the AI maybe attributed some of these streaks on the ground to being lightning. And then once again, in a photo like this, maybe it attributed this bright light to being lightning, which in my opinion, isn't a big deal. We found the photo that we were looking for being this lightning images. It just brought up some stuff that isn't as relevant. That one is, is really interesting to me. I'm gonna have to check that one out later. Now, like I said, I think this is gonna continue to get better in the future. And in my opinion, all that matters is that we found the image that we're looking for, but it is important to note that this is not perfect yet. Now, last, I wanna show you a brief example of how I'm using this tool in my creative workflow, how I'm using this to get inspired, find ideas, find images I can pair together and create photo sets with continuity, with ease, even if I'm looking for photos that are contained in different folders or shot at different times. So here's how I've been using XR Photo in the workflow for my daily photo project. I will pick a particular theme that I know a photo that I'm interested in is contained inside of. So typically for me, that's like a street photography and city stuff or car stuff. I don't do a lot of portraits or anything like that. So for this example, we'll go ahead and click on architecture right here. Now, as you can see, there are 2,473 architecture photos, but we can click on this drop down right here and we can see all the different subcategories 
of architecture photos. As you can see right here, there is a bridge contained in this set of photos, which is technically architecture, but it's not what we're looking for today. There's also this house, which is technically architecture, but we're looking for some more city stuff. So what we can do is we can click on this building drop down right here and we can go to the type of building we're looking for, which in our case is a skyscraper. So we can look at all of these different skyscraper images and we can look for one that maybe we might have missed or one that we think is relevant and could be a good photo for the day. This is actually a good example of an image that I completely forgot about. It was made on 4-19-2023, and if I want to find that photo, I can just go find it in the folder it's contained on my computer. I can open it up in Lightroom, and I can edit the image. But I can also take this one step further by finding particular photos and looking for a match that's not on the same particular day. So what I could do is, let's say we have this image right here. I could take this image and I could click on find similar photos. So we have this image right here. We can search the entire database. We can bring our search results just way up to make sure that we capture everything and we can start our search. And as you can see, we now have photos that match that original image. So let's say I wanna make a photo set utilizing this image and something that matches with it. I could pick out this photo right here, which has similar colors. And now I have the file names and I can also find the location easily to create this photo set. Or I can scroll through these and look for images that I might have otherwise not intended on pairing with this particular photo, but because I now have them all in front of me, I might find some inspiration I didn't know was there. So maybe something like this image right here, which has this big orange streak in the top of it, could match with one of these photos. Or maybe this photo right here could pair with one of these or one of these. It's so much easier for me to be able to pinpoint images that pair up with one another, which is one of the main styles I've been using on my photo page, when I have the ability to search for similar images. And I could break this down even farther if I wanted, and I could do a text prompt from this current selection by clicking on this gearbox right here saying current view and let's say I want to do the keyword fence. Oh, I actually spelt that wrong, but it worked anyways. So now I'm getting all the photos in that selection of city architecture photos that contain a fence. So creatively, if I wanted to make a set of photos all dedicated to a fence, I technically could. Now let's say I wanna find photos that only have a particular color palette inside of this set of fence images, which I'm still amazed that this picked up all the fence photos based on a misspelling of fence that just shows how powerful this is. We can go up to find by key keyword and we can click on brown, red, and orange and we can select at least one of these keywords and we are going to get 48 results based off of our fence search. So that breaks it down and now we get all the images that have a similar color palette and could easily be paired together. So all of that is a brief breakdown of how I'm using XR Photo 2024 in my current workflow, both as a creator and in my business. I don't do a ton of client stuff anymore, but let's say my buddies at Epitome ATL reached out to me and said, hey, we wanna do a book of all the photos that we made when you worked with us. This is actually a way for me to easily find all those photos instead of searching through all my drives to find the random folders of sneaker photos that I made years and years ago. Now, it's important to note that there are some other features we didn't go over in this video, like the ability to use your GPS geotag in your photos to filter your images. If you're someone who has GPS data in the metadata on your photos, you can search simply based on the geographic region that photos were made. So let's say you've been to Canada a couple times, you can filter by all the photos you made in Canada if that geotag is there. And Personally, I think that's pretty cool. And remember, this is a plugin that can also work with Lightroom if you feel like using it that way. There are two options. There is XR Photo Search and XR Photo 2024. Search works seamlessly with Lightroom, but if you're like me and you don't wanna jam up your Lightroom catalog, you can use XR Photo 2024 to find an image you're looking for, then loc 
locate the image on your drive, bring it into Lightroom and edit it without filling up your catalog. Everyone's workflow will be a little bit different. But that right there is everything I wanted to talk about today. AI that is actually helping my photography process that doesn't make me feel threatened or make me feel like I'm gonna be replaced by it. This is a cool tool that I recommend any professional check out. Linked in the description down below is that 14 day risk-free trial so you can test it for yourself and see if it's something that works inside of your business or creative process. Big shout out to XR Photo 2024 for helping us out and giving us that link and sponsoring today's video. And if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something new, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you are not yet, and feel free to support the Daily Photo Project at Evan Ram Photo. I'll link that in the first comment down below. Pin it so you can just tap in, go check it out. I'm really proud of this project, but that is it for me today. I'll see y'all in the next one.